and we're rolling so uh welcome back to round on a bikes base camp and we're not in the actual base camp down in the garage we're at the in at the um, computers here in the editing uh, suite and uh, this is the q a section that i was talking about at the end of the last episode of the uh, round without a plan season two so i'm go just gonna go through all the questions that I got uh, uh, as a comment underneath each episode and uh, also not just your questions to me but also I might have said asked the question in the video and you reply to it so I'm going to comment or if it's just a funny comment that I want to take up anyway so I, here on this screen here I have my my um, uh, comments and questions and I'm going to read them out loud to you now so in episode one uh, daryl moffett asked uh, or said that i'm a little bit surprised that so there were so few people on the ferry this is the ferry that i went to the continent from sweden to poland and can um, can you tell me the starting point and landing point of the ferry and how many hours it took so normally i go from uh, Karlskrona in Sweden to Gdynia in Poland. I have also traveled on uh, the ferry from Ystad to Svinucci, but the one from uh, Karlskrona to Gdynia that takes around 10 hours. And the reason why there were so few people on this one is probably because it was in the middle of a pandemic and uh, people just didn't travel. Now I had them made some research and Poland was okay for me to go to and travel to and they had no problem in you know letting me in or anything so that was um, probably the reason why there was so uh, the, normally they are full so you can't just show up and get a place you have to pre-book uh, a space right in episode three leo hart 2201 is uh, commenting i hope you know it's illegal to ride this gravel road to sobibor uh, that sign in yeah the time of the video 756 it means uh, beware of the gorge i'm afraid it's a big difference in this case between sweden and poland no it's not really uh, i was aware of the sign i also turned around right after the sign when i realized that i was on the wrong route to the sobibor so um, i turned around and i took the next one in and it's not more strange than that really uh, i can guarantee you that in sweden there are guards at the roads to military installations as well so no big difference between our respective countries i would say in this matter uh, episode four big guy on a little adventure i love that uh, that handler for the channel you're very lucky to have uh, to be able to ride so many different cultures within the days from your home here in the us uh, while we have a wide variety of beautiful natural nat natural settings the culture is pretty much the same everywhere i agree we are pretty fortunate to have that here in europe you can go from one country to another however i would say most of those European countries where I've been visiting, uh, that's the people that put the was the base to the population of the US, what it is today. So I'm guessing that you would have a lot of that still there in the US, like uh, people from different kind of because the US is pretty segregated and you know all the Italians live in little Italy all the Chinese people live in Chinatown live in Chinatown so you have that kind of different cultures within the US as well just that it's maybe a couple of generations apart from the original settings so I think you have it there as well actually uh, if you think about it I haven't explored the US that much, so I can't really say, but I'm 
fairly sure that you have different cultures and uh, people also living around like the Amish or you know there's uh, plenty of of different places where people live in different ways uh, yes also episode four we have uh, Steve McEwen and he writes riding in hot weather you have to be careful with dehydration wherever you feel tired annoyed or angry you should stop and drink some water if you are dehydrated the feeling will disappear in minutes that is a very good comment on the video i have to say uh, and it's an important one actually i'm happy uh, that you brought it up steve because this is this is an important topic for adventure motorcyclist i wrote an article for the traverse magazine uh, it's an australian uh, adventure magazine uh, a while back i'll put a link to it down below uh, where i talk about the truths and the myths about dehydration and rehydration uh, because i've been telling people the truth about that for a long time when I was working as a scuba instructor in Egypt uh, and then I decided to write the article so I had to I had to verify all the information I had and did all the research and I came up with a conclusion that most of what I've been saying is wrong so a lot of the myths that you hear about dehydration and rehydration is actually incorrect and I collected all the facts in an article which was published in the uh, uh, the magazine um, uh, Traverse magazine and you can read it it's uh, it's quite an interesting topic and it is very important to know about these things when you're traveling especially in warm climates right uh, episode 5 we're at episode 5 now and Mr. Kalos Puff which I happen to know his name is Niklas and he's a good friend of mine uh, he writes nice find that smz s3d is a russian made micro car micro car and i have to say thank you to niklas for doing the research because i was going to try to find out a little bit more about what kind of car that was and because i'm, I'm curious and uh, niklas beat me to it so i didn't have to do all the googling and researching he did that and you will find a link to the information in the description below as well thanks niklas episode six vince vans uh, or banka i don't know he writes um from episode six i can't believe it's the first time i see your get out and do the thing logo on your jacket miss zito is an inspiration for sure and i have to say i agree Amanda Zito is one of my absolute favorite uh, YouTube channel, artist, motorcyclist, adventurer, everything. She's just such a down to earth, natural, cool lady. And she makes really nice videos. Uh, a link to her uh, videos or her YouTube channel in the description below as well. This patch that I have on my jacket is actually serial number zero 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 one and that just because i was the first one to order one when she uh, put them up for sale so i got the first one i also bought two so i have zero 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 two which i gave to my friend david uh quite proud of that obviously right also uh, episode six june's adventures mc uh he writes really strange man that got into your room it rings from the world war ii era yes it does <laughs> and for the on the same topic nick l laskasis laskasis oh i can't remember your your uh, last name now he also writes about the same guy uh, would be nicer if the waitress had ended up in your room with fascist fascist ideas yes that would have been better i would have you know at least not hated it as much episode seven here we have a big guy on a little adventure and he writes hi anders 
may I make a suggestion? And yes, you may, uh, of course. Uh, keep the spot on your ja in your jacket pocket and not on uh, attached to your bike. You might become separated from your motorcycle in an accident, but uh, your jacket is pretty likely to stay on you. Yes, that is correct. However, I used to have it on my um, on my camel pack, and I kept losing my camel pack, and it's really annoying. Uh, the, in my jacket pocket, probably I wouldn't lose it as much. Uh, or leave it behind but uh, the thing is that if I don't have it in my face as I'm um, setting off for the day I will forget to put it turn it on so I have to have it where I can see it if I have it in my pocket it would be switched off 99% of the time I'm on the road also I lost my motorcycle once and I found it back because my spot was on the bike so yeah, uh, it's gonna stay on the handlebar, I think. Also, if I go for a trek or something like this, for a walk somewhere, I can, uh, it's just attached with the, uh, with the Velcro. So I can then uh, take it off and put it in my jacket pocket. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to keep it on my handlebar for now. Right. Episode 8. Here is Vince Vanka again. Vanka? Vansa? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see you left your jacket on the bike while going to the canyon. Uh, you never had any bad surprises with people too curious about your stuff. Actually, no, I haven't. I always leave all my stuff hanging on the bike uh, once I'm walking around. I leave my jacket, my helmet, my boots sometimes. Sometimes my key is in the ignition, not on purpose, but it happens. And I never had a problem. I have never ever had anything stolen off of my bike, as far as I can remember. Uh, same side of the token, I have had people coming running after me. Hey, you, you, you dropped this, you left this or, or things like this. So I have had people coming and giving me my stuff that I left behind, but never anyone sto stolen anything stolen off my bike. Uh, you have dickheads and dishonest people everywhere in the world, um, but the majority of people, I'd say, are you know honest and and uh, helpful, and it's. I trust the man in this on the street, so to speak. I, I have no problem with it at all. So yeah. Right, so we are on episode nine here, and um, uh, Thomas Hansen, very, very good uh, uh, YouTuber, and he makes excellent videos, and he's, he's really, if you haven't seen his channel, you have to do so. It's, it's fantastic. Um, he is uh, talking a little bit about how nice people are and uh, and especially these uh, guys at the um, tire shop and I've been very fortunate uh, to meet good people in tire shops but he also says that um, this thing with um, uh, language and uh, that is sometimes difficult difficult uh, to make yourself understood and to understand some people and he says I'm not sure you know about it but uh, the Google Translate app has a really good voice translate option uh, for situations with people who don't speak the same language yes I'm aware of that thing and sometimes people want to use it I try to avoid it because I I don't know I prefer to try to talk with body language and hand signals and trying to come up with words that might work in their language and so on. Um, I have used it sometimes and for example Anna in uh, at the hotel Pina Anya or I, I can't remember now the name of the hotel but all of you know who I mean. Uh, she loves this thing and she's like talking into this uh, to her phone and then she's holding up Andrea Andrea look at this and um, 
yeah she likes it so i used it with her a little bit and with other people as well but normally i just try to figure out a way to make myself understood anyway i, I just enjoy it it's it's a, it's a cool thing and yeah we're all different um the same episode urban monk um i don't know if you've seen his channel but if you haven't please do so he's just fi uh, in the middle of a season of uh, travel he's uh, riding from coast to coast in us and it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant and uh, he writes here uh i like your comment about uh the bends feeling more and more like switchbacks and that is immediately followed by the music lyrics i wouldn't want it any other way and i'm so happy that that you noticed that um because that is something if i can work the lyrics and the music into the situation i try to do it it's not very often that it works but if i can i try and actually there are a few other situations in previous videos where i have done that so that's an easter egg hunt for you if you if you feel like looking after them looking for them urban monk also comments uh, on episode 10 he's a very frequent commenter and i like that i comment on his videos as well because his videos are always um uh, always there's always something to talk about in his videos and he writes uh that castle is amazing you're so lucky to have access to many old world wonders like that and um yes that is true it's pretty cool castle and in kaminsky whatever I yeah i'll write here the name of the place um uh, it's a pretty cool castle and but i mean europe has been around for a while and people have been building stuff here for a long time apart from the viking settlements possibly there shouldn't be a lot of european buildings from before 1492 in in the north in north america um but u.s history didn't start with europeans making starting to build buildings i mean there is a, a lot of um, must be plenty of native american remnants uh, around from the time before which is i'm i'm quite jealous of actually to have that uh so there should be old stuff also in the us i'm guessing just that it's not really european influenced um bob on a leg bob one leg i think it is um he asked how many times did you have to change currency on this trip and uh, i actually had quite a lot of currency and bills and and you know money uh from previous trips and i still have here um a bunch of a dreadlock of money and this is like well yeah euros of course there's a plenty of euros but i have a uh, ukraine romanian russian uh, moldova albania serbia czech republic croatia transnistria which i'm quite proud of so i have a I had already when I left I had and still have quite a lot of uh, of of money from the different countries where I was going to travel through uh, that being said I mainly use my card anyway there are areas where you where they don't take cards you have to use uh, paper money uh, so whenever you enter a country you should have the local currency with you in your pocket uh because if you need to find uh, lodging for the night and they don't take card you, they only take cash you're in trouble if you don't have any cash uh, so i always have uh, local currency on me but it's not that often that i really need to use it um yeah uh, episode 11 we're at now lorenzo pena uh he writes ha 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 uh that conversation that conversation man loved it i'm guessing 
you're talking about the conversation I had with the people where I paid the entrance fee or the parking fee for Tulsa Tusta Castle. Um, and that, yeah, that was that was funny. Let's look at it. It's it is quite funny. Hello. You need money? Yeah. How much? Vije. Belge. So? Party show. I have no idea. Sorry. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, whatever you say, Jack, you're the master race. Yeah, that is funny. Uh, Urban Monk also writes on, on uh, episode 11, I envy your multilingual capabilities. An embarrassing shortcoming of mine. Love the music, musician, and that instrument was amazing. Like a bagpipe with a crank. <laughs> that is funny. Well, uh, about my language capabilities, it's not really that impressive. I mean, you know, um, my I speak English, uh, a bit of German, a little bit of French and uh, Arabic, uh, but it's not really that impressive, I think. I, I enjoy learning languages, so when I have been living in, for example, Egypt, I've been learning Arabic because I think it's to show a minimum of respect to the people I'm living with at the moment to learn their language. But uh, I, also, I, I just enjoy languages. And um, even if you don't know a language, you can pretty much work it out, I think, uh, how it works and how you can understand bits and pieces enough to, you know, survive. Uh, the musician, yes, wasn't he amazing? Uh, I posted actually a whole a longer video with just him playing uh, at, I can't remember when I did that but I think it's before I started posting the videos from the trip uh, yeah he was amazing and it, he explained to me that he was a liar um, some people have said that it's a hurdy-gurdy but I've been looking into that a little bit and uh, from what I have learned online by doing some research that's a liar and a, a, a hurdy-gurdy is something slightly different, but very similar. Uh, yes, it is a bit like a bagpipe with this monotone tones lying, just sounding in the background and then the melody. It's, it's very interesting in a way. Oh, eh, on episode 13, uh, Mat Matthias Eriksson uh, brought an, an camp. He's if you haven't watched his videos, you really have to. They are really, really good. Uh, he says that he enjoys the episodes and and uh, he's interested in my thoughts on Ukraine because it's in his future plans as well. I have to say that Ukraine is a country, it's like made for motorcycle travel. Uh, if you want to go on good roads, you can, because there are plenty of good roads, especially the last couple of years, they've been building up the infrastructure dramatically but you can also go on the small country roads on and the back roads and it's just amazing and the people are so nice they are so kind they are so helpful and just pleasant people also it's pretty good food uh, so I really enjoy Ukraine and uh, it's pretty cheap it's not really you know you can get a room for like uh, 15 euros or 20 euros including breakfast so that's quite good and uh, there are plenty of uh, of different kinds of nature you can go on the flat lands and the agricultural lands and you can come up in the mountains and the, you, the switchbacks and uh, it's got everything and it's cheap and it's friendly and nice and tastes good so i can definitely recommend ukraine on the same episode, episode 13, Mark Matthews, uh, he writes something that is, I'm really happy that you brought this up, Mark, because 
everybody have their own style in editing and filming and and uh, it's just um or with the music and and with the narrating and you you bring up something with my videos that i haven't really it's not like a conscious decision that i made but it's as close as you can get to a conscious decision conscious decision um without being one so he writes, I find that I always forward through your writing. I realize that is because you don't talk. Some voiceovers for sure, like today. However interesting the scenery, I happen to find your opinions and talking to others interest, the more interesting parts. I miss about half of the videos because of its silence, no matter how beautiful the view is, etc. No mic in the helmet, I presume. Just my reflection on a very entertaining and educational content, Anders. My light went off. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I do have a mic in my helmet. I, I have a mic, mic system. I have the Sina that I can put on. I had it on for the around the Baltic Sea trip. And um, the microphone and the, and the, and the loud or the, the headphones. Um, I never really saw the point with it. I can, uh, I don't want to talk to the, on the phone. I don't want to have music when I'm writing. Big no, I don't want to have music when I'm writing. And uh, when it comes to having, um, talking into the microphone while I'm writing, I have like gigabytes of footage to look through. And if I would have to look for every time that I say something into the microphone, the editing would be 10 times more work. Uh, I know I could make a sign or something like this when I'm uh, starting to talk, uh, but I just, don't, I prefer to have the writing as writing and sometimes I make a voiceover because I like to, I don't not spice it up, but I, you know, to have a little bit more engagement. Uh, but normally the writing for me in a video, like when I watch other people's uh, motorcycle videos, I prefer to watch the writing. I just my my thing i guess but again it's my video so yeah uh, but anyway thanks for bringing it up and i might take that in consideration for the future so thanks for that mark uh and on the same episode episode 13 big guy on a little adventure writes poland has mountains and to that question the answer is yes uh, it's actually got really nice mountains in the southeast corner or the south end of Poland. There are a lot of mountains and very nice uh, switchback roads. In episode 14, I get a very funny comment from uh, Urban Monk. He writes, uh, great scenery in this one, Anders. Thank you. Um, and from now on, when I have breakfast, I will pay my respects to Rory the Centurion, patron saint of breakfast spots. Uh, that was a pretty cool place actually, I just found it and the reason why I called it the, the um, uh, Rory the Centurions, the, the uh, patron saint of breakfast spots is I couldn't find any information at the place what it was about and the guy standing in this little shrine looked like a centurion so in my head popped up an episode from Doctor Who where Rory becomes a centurion. So it just, uh, it was a spur of a moment thing, but it was, it was nice that someone noticed. Uh, same episode, Evert Kroiken. Uh, I know the feeling, can't park nearby the, the spot with the um, bike, then okay, bye bye. And that's from when I went up this hill to see the, the ruins of the castle, and they shooed me away from parking outside. 
to be honest, I kind of knew I wasn't supposed to go up there with a bike, but I thought I'd just take a chance and I went up and um, they spotted me and they shooed me away. So, you know, I there was me making the wrong thing there. It wasn't them being, you know, bad hosts or anything. Uh, episode 15, Stephen Baker, my very good Stephen Baker. He noticed that I sometimes film pretty girls when I'm out on my rides. And uh, he's, he's putting me a little bit on the spot here by uh, asking a question. Difficult question is, are there more very pretty girls in Poland or in Lithuania? It's difficult and I think more research is needed. Yes, Stephen. Um, more <laughs> research on pretty girls is always needed. So let's do that. Same episode here is um, episode 15. Uh, Panagos Kakatosis. He asks, wow, is this Poland? And same as a lot of people have been asking me if, if wow, this is nice, Poland, really? And yes, Poland is fantastic country to ride in. He's asking, uh, if the name of the city where I was riding through was uh, Vorklo, uh, because I was there and or it looks similar. I misunderstood you, uh, Panagos, when I read that because I replied to you in text in the comment field. And I think I misunderstood you about well, if that was this UFO place, uh, but you are talking about the city that I came to a little bit later and there was a place called Boleslaviec and it's about 120 kilometers west of Brokla what you're talking about and the cities or the towns around there in this area they look pretty similar and they have like the same kind of atmosphere so it's not it's not really strange to to mix them up to be honest uh, Panagos also writes on episode 16 uh, that he has a suggestion that I should cover up my microphone because you hear sometimes that the wind is blowing into the microphone and, and it's, um, it, it gives like a really bad sound quality. And yes, I, I agree with you. I do have my microphone, which is this one with a dead cat on it. Um, but halfway through the trip, this, the holder just broke and I couldn't attach it and I couldn't just hold it. So I also, the, um, the dongle for the microphone, GoPro connection for the microphone to the camera, that was also, you know, it was like, making sounds and it was really shit. So I, I just took it off and used the internal microphone. And even though, and even though the microphones are positioned around the GoPro so that it's supposed to use the one that sounds the best, it sort of cuts from one to another and it, it really sucks. But uh, yeah, that's how it worked this, this trip. I was unlucky with my cameras and microphones a little bit. So yeah, I agree with you, uh, but that's the excuse. Uh, it's not, or it's a reason anyway. Uh, episode seven, Bob one leg. A round tire is better than a flat one. Yes, uh, that is correct. Uh, I had a couple of flats and uh, yeah. But it doesn't bother me much. It, it gives like an extra piece of adventure to the day. And as long as it, you, you get out of it in one piece, it's okay, really. Uh, and then he also asked, how many kilometers does Betty have on the clock now? And um, the same question is has been posted a, a couple of times. How many kilometers do I have on Betty? And uh, she's got 9,000... 470 kilometers on the clock right now. When I bought her, she had 4,400 or something like this. This is four years ago, five years ago, maybe. Yeah, 
So yeah, she's been with me for a couple of kilometers by now. On the same episode also, I get a, a question from some person with Kyrillic letters in his name. So I had to go into Google Translate and see if I could make out what his name was. And I was pleasantly surprised when his name or handle on his YouTube channel is Sheltered Alexander. That's quite a cool name, I think. And he writes, hi, I have the same bike, wicked, or, you know, the best bike in the world, uh, 3YF. Uh, can you please tell me about your helmet? Yes, I can tell you about my helmet. It's an LS2 and uh, I bought it because it was, you know, a good price. And uh, it, he writes also, I heard it's very noisy. Will it be convenient to wear with glasses? I wear it with my glasses. And I have these uh, that goes just straight in behind, the, so it doesn't. I have it doesn't have this bend. It just goes straight in, and it works very well in that helmet. Um, yes, it is a bit noisy. Uh, it doesn't bother me much, but it is a little bit noisy. So this final episode, episode uh, eighteen. Uh, Panagos is back again and he writes you can make some garage service uh, videos with the Tenere. Yeah, I can. I have. And if you look at my channel you will find I have quite a lot of uh, maintenance and or a lot. I have some maintenance and service and garage work on the uh, putting on the crash bars, the panniers uh, and everything like this. So I have uh, some of it and oil change and you know things like that you can find out but yeah absolutely I'm I want to do more garage videos with maintenance and all that kind of thing so it will be more um, quite soon I expect because right now it's not inviting to go out sleeping in in uh, in a tent really so I'll probably make some of those in the winter um, Enduro DK, which is a guy called Dan, and he's got he's got a Yamaha Tenere as well, the same as I do, and which he um, rebuilt and he made it absolutely gorgeous. I would like to just leave Betty with him for a couple of weeks and get it back, get her back a little bit, you know, facelifted. Uh, don't tell her, uh, but he's writes a couple of questions here that are very interesting questions and I'm so happy that he wrote them. And the first one is, if you had six months, enough funds and could go for a trip anywhere on earth, what region would you go and um, for a six month motorcycle explore trip? Well, I have been looking into going around the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea which would not take six months, but um, it would take maybe three, four, three. And um, that's, that's a dream that I have, that I want to do. But also I have other dreams. I would like to go to, ride all the way to Magadan in Russia. Uh, and I would like to uh, do Africa. That would be cool. Uh, but, if I had to just pick an area, I would probably spend six months on extending my around the Black Sea and Caspian Sea and maybe include Balkan again because I love Balkan. Maybe ex include a little bit more of Russia um, just to get, you know, the time in. Uh, I like to ride eastwards. I like the eastern countries. Um, nice people, nice food, fairly cheap and just amazing nature and everything. So that would probably be an extended trip around the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Number two from Dan is if you should come up with the three best things about Betty and the three worst things about Betty. Uh, so three pros and three cons. Well, pros are easy, really. You know, um, she's comfortable as a 
Chesterfield armchair. Um, the seat and the sitting riding position, everything. I've tried a lot of other newer bikes and they're not as comfortable. I mean, yeah, obviously um, they don't make the seats this wide and this soft anymore. Um, but yeah, she's comfortable. She's she is as comfortable as a Chesterfield armchair. Um, also, another thing that's not a lot of things that can go wrong with a with a uh, analog bike. I mean, a lot of newer bikes you need to you know connect to a laptop to find out what's wrong with them, and I don't want that. So uh, that's uh, the more stuff you have like special stuff like things electronics and stuff the more things can go wrong that you can't fix so that's the one thing that i like about her so the third then uh would be that she's easy to fix i mean i can i can take a, a roll of tape a rubber band and a ballpoint pen and uh, fix her macgyver style anywhere on a gravel road in albania uh, so yeah that's one thing also that i like about her she's easy to fix uh three cons uh three bad things about betty she doesn't have abs uh which you know in certain situations would be good uh so that's one uh, she could have a little bit more power not that I miss I don't think that she has you know not enough power because for what I do it's enough so I I'm not missing out on power that I would you know have a big advantage of having um, so that's two things and uh, yeah she can't fly. I don't know. Uh, the third thing, I'll, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit more if I'm going to have to come up with. Anyway, so the third question that Don is uh, asking, if you had to let Betty go and could choose any motorcycle in the world to replace her, uh, what would you choose your new dream bike? I'd probably pick a, a Honda XRV 750. I think they were made from 92 to 2003 or something like this. Africa Twin. When I was looking to buy an adventure bike, it was I was looking for an Africa Twin XRV 750 or a Tenere. So I just found the, the Tenere. I bought her for equivalent of 950 euros. So yeah, that was a big, a good deal. Uh, so yeah, I, I would probably be... Uh, then again, the new T7 is, uh, is seems, it seems to be a really nice bike and also not so much electronics and stuff so yeah t7 if i have to buy if i have to get well, let's see could choose any motorcycle in the world to replace her what would it be yeah t7 obviously i would pick the t7 yamaha yeah so if I have to pay for a bike myself, I would probably look, and I couldn't have a, a Tenere, I would probably go for the XRV 750 Africa Twin. If someone would just give me a bike out of the blue, I would pick the T7. So yeah, there you go, T7. All right, uh, that was all the questions that uh, I had on this uh, series. Uh, and the uh, comments that I wanted to bring into this. So yeah, uh, next episode of Around on a Bike will be 
probably uh, a trip that I did with Niklas, the Mr. Kalospuff that actually wrote something here in the comments as well. Uh, before I left on this uh, Around Without a Plan trip. So I have that footage and I have saved it because I knew that I would need to have a little bit more after this trip was finished or this season of Around Without a Plan was finished. So I have saved that as a little bit of a treat. Also, I'm going to uh, have a, a little break over Christmas and New Year's. Uh, I normally, I don't do Christmas because, you know, why would I? Um, so I'll, I normally just switch my phone off and, and go, you know, <laughs> below the radar, uh, off the grid uh, for a couple of weeks. So you will probably not get anything over Christmas and uh, New Year's from me. Uh, I hope that's okay that I take a little break. So yeah, that was all for this time and uh, you know, have fun, stay safe.